there welcome back to my art table and today what we're going to work on is doing a glazed painting with a little bit of texture I've got a canvas board here I'm uh, working small to fit in the frame here um, I'm doing some larger tutorials as some people have requested so be sure to sign up for my newsletter the links below and uh, I'll be sending out information on those so today what we're going to work on with this canvas, this is already prepped with a coat of titanium white. All of my canvases start with that. Some start with a coat of gesso and then titanium white if they're going to be a large archival. But for our purposes today, I just put on a coat of titanium white, let it dry. So I'm working with my uh, molding paste. Again, you can use a gel, a modeling paste, anything that's a texture that will hold up. I have had a couple people ask if you can just use gesso as your texture and not really because what gesso will do, even though it looks like it's built up on the canvas, once it dries, it settles and tends to smooth out. So it's not going to leave you that large nubby texture that we really want. So you really need a paste or a gel uh, when you're applying your texture to have it uh, stand up and be a structure on the canvas. So I'm working upside down here. So what I see is going to be correct. I will turn it around so you see the final, but I need to work that way. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from bottom and I'm going to just kind of do sort of a a rainy teardroppy kind of thing and by that I mean just kind of it's going to kind of fade away up here at the top um, and be a little heavier here toward the bottom and with texture you can work until uh, it dries so you can scrape it off and reapply um, sometimes it does leave a little residue on the canvas, but uh, if you scrape it off well enough, you can pretty much get it all off. So, um, like I'm going to take this off right here, maybe put just a little more right there. Take this off, maybe a little more right there. So it's just one of those things where you're kind of playing around with it. Um, I'm doing a just little bits of vertical beading sort of so you can see it's going to have quite a bit more here at the bottom and kind of fade off up here into the top so we're going to let that dry this is what it Looks like if you can see that, it's got a little heavier here and a little lighter as we move up to the top here. I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start applying some layers with our glazes in the next session. So let this dry for about 24 hours or so. And it should be nice and dry. You can dry it longer if you'd like to. And uh, then we'll get started again. Hello and welcome back to my art table. Uh, today we're going to finish up this painting that had sort of the teardrop cascade pattern of texture. So what I'm using, flat brush. A mop blush brush for blending. I'll be using some glaze, white of course, a little metallic gold. My colors of choice for this are going to be a magenta or any pink or you can mix up your pink with a little red and white of course, an orange and a lemon yellow and white. So, of course, if you don't have these colors, you can go ahead and mix them up yourself very easily or whatever colors you choose to do. And so what I'm going to be doing is a, a very simple blended pattern in the background. 
My texture is good and dry. I'm going to mist my canvas, a little bit of water, not too much. I'm going to put a little glaze, and this is a satin glaze. I'm using the golden brand. You can use whatever brand you like. I like to put a little bit of water in there and a little water on my brush. A little water goes a long way with acrylics. Remember that. Too much water will break down the pigment. A little water will help the paint flow a bit, but you do need some good medium. So consider investing in those to really get a nice painting. Okay, so I've got a little glaze on there. I'm gonna go over my entire painting. Since it's small, I would not do this on a large scale canvas. I would work differently. But since this is a small canvas, I can cover it quickly and I can also paint quickly and blend quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and put down a little paint right on my canvas, a little dot of white. Kind of try to visualize where you want your color uh, when you when it when it's all blended. If you want it lighter on the top, then put more white there and grade your colors uh, deeper. My deepest color is likely to be this magenta pink. So I'm going to go toward the bottom with that, and in the center is going to be a little bit of this orange. And it doesn't really matter what exact colors these are. You know, if you really need to know, I probably will list them below. I might not. I, I just, you know, this is a basic guideline on technique and how to create this type of painting. And you can use whatever colors speak to you. A little more white. One more dust of and when I missed, I stand back and I miss sort of like how you spray perfume on yourself. You mist in the air and then you walk into it. Instead of really dousing my canvas, I mist up in the air and let it settle. And that gives me a much nicer, uh, just a very light mist over my entire painting versus big puddles of water in spots. So I'm going to start with my white. Spread that out. Always start with your lighter colors because if you start with the pink, then you're going to have pink all the way up here. You may not want that. So start with your white. Then I'm moving into my yellow. Kind of bringing that up around the sides as I want my final pattern to be. Moving into a little orange. You can always go through and add a little more white, a little more whatever. As long as you're working quickly with the acrylics, you can use a, what's called a retarder, and that will extend your uh, time painting, sort of creates a longer work time. Um, there's open air acrylics, you can try those. Those will give you a little longer work time as well. They're meant to be used en plein air, as they say, and uh, that means painting outside, as some artists do. Uh, so you can experiment with those types of things if you're finding you're just not quite getting enough working time with acrylics. And with a blended painting, I often use a retarder. I'm not here because it's so small, but if this were a larger painting, I would definitely be using a retarder to uh, increase my working time. All right, so you see I've created uh, this sort of pattern that's kind of moving upwards into the light. Now I'm taking a clean mop brush, fanning it out, always to get out extra bristles before you paint because these things, all brushes will will shed, but, but mops for some reason I find are worse than others. And very lightly we're doing our blending technique just using the very tips, the very tip of these bristles to get that sort of soft, washy look. And as you see, it's it's holding on to paint. So as I move forward, it's, it's carrying some of the other colors. 
which is a little tough with the blender. But I happen to really like that because I like those different colors. But if you want a true, you know, saturated one color and not a lot of blend, you can use a sponge. You can use various blenders. What I'm going to do is grab another blender. Usually if you use blenders, you need two or three because as they become wet, they'll grab more paint and, and just sort of move it around versus blending. So I'm grabbing a very, and I'm using just, I mean, it's like putting blush on very, very light, light movement and touch. And I'm just gonna put that all the way around, moving and working upward Toward the sides here. Got a little more saturation of yellow in this one spot where I, I actually like that. I'm going to leave that. But again, you do it moves you. And I am pretty much happy with this as it is. So I'm going to let this dry really well. And then we're going to come back over it with a little bit of a, a glazed uh, bit of metallic. Just a little bit of gold on top. You could leave it here if you're happy with it. You can add a little more white and continue to blend. I would suggest at this point, um, I'm pretty happy with this. And if I move it too much more, then I'm just going to be removing color versus actually blending. So I have to be real careful at this point. Uh, once the color dries, you can't blend anymore, obviously. So get it to the, the best point that you consider it done uh, your first go around. And you do have to work quickly. Okay, so I'm going to let it dry and we'll come back and finish it. All right, we're back. And this has dried. So what I'm going to do is put on my next layer. My next layer is going to be... A, uh, an acrylic glazing gloss. And you can use satin, but I'm going to choose a gloss for this. I'm putting a little on my palette. And I'm going to mix with that a little bit of a metallic gold. So, this is what I have on my palette. I'm putting just a little bit of water on my brush, my flat brush, and I'm going to mix those together. Because I'm using the glaze and not a full-on strength um, paint, I'm going to get a much softer bit of paint versus full-on paint. A little bit of glaze gives you just, uh, like it says, a little light glaze. And this is a metallic. So I'm working from the bottom up. And I'm covering this. I don't want to spray my canvas because it's only been a few hours letting this dry versus a day or two. So the spraying it would eat through that paint. So I'm, any water you need to add, if you're not sure if your paint is fully dry, is going to be best added to your paint on a canvas, or I mean on a palette, or to your brush. Do not mist a canvas that has not fully dried. I think I've covered that. I just keep saying it because it is so important. I'm working from the bottom to the top, covering certain areas of this with a little bit of glaze. So I'm getting a soft look. Here at the top, I want to blend this out just a little bit more. rid of those brush strokes. 
I'm looking for a, 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 my finished look is, you know, ideally to be sort of a real pretty, glimmery, springtime looking painting with soft, pretty colors and a little bit of iridescence and white. So my white is getting a bit covered up. I'm going to bring in a little white that I just happen to have on my brush. Um, you could do this with just a little, little white, just to soften the top of this a bit. It got a little more colored than I wanted it to be. Bringing that down just to kind of soften those colors, blend them a bit. Working quickly with acrylics is going to be your best bet. I do have a little bit of a, a damp sponge. I'm going to bring that in to the mix. And use it very lightly just for a little bit of blending. I am very, very, very lightly touching this canvas and going around in a circular pattern. I don't want to remove paint. I just want to blend it uh, and bring up just a little bit of that color so it comes into a very soft focus look. You could do this with a mop brush, um, but I just happen to have chosen a little sponge. So I do have a gradation look. It's whider, it's a little more uh, mid-tone here, and then it gets a little deeper in the pinks down here. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to go over this again with a little bit of my gold, and I'm probably going to use some pigment powder, which adds a beautiful shimmery metallic finish to a painting like this. So I'm going to come back in just a minute and show you that. All right, welcome back. We are going to go ahead and finish up this painting with our gold and our pigment powder. What I'm going to do, it's it's dry, uh, it's not fully cured. I used a blow dryer, dried it off, and uh, let it dry for a little bit. But I'm going to take some of the glaze and the gold paint I had left over. I just popped that in a plastic bag while I was waiting, so it's still wet with my brush and I'm going to just softly lay that over my texture just to pick a little bit of that up a little of this here, soften and then I'm taking some gold pigment powder and I'm going to put a little bit of this on my palette so you can see what it is. It's just a very fine gold fleck pigment powder and it adds a very pretty shimmery finish. I'm going to take a little bit of a damp or a dry paper towel And just where it's wet on some of those spots, pick up a little of that pigment powder on my paper towel and kind of rub that in and just kind of kind of massage it in like that. And it will pick up where the paint is wet and then the other spots will, you know, you can just wipe away or uh, use your blow dryer to blow it off in the end. So you have it where you really are interested in having a more concentrated will be where the wet paint is that you just laid down and the lighter bits of pigment and gold will be on the dry. It will leave a little bit of a shimmer but it won't be as concentrated as say it is right in this spot right here and around the edge here. It's very concentrated. So I'm going to put a little more of my 
my paint down just to get a little more concentration in that area. Pick up a little more pigment powder. You can just buy that at the craft store or online. It's They have all colors and uh, I really like working with the metallics. And I'm going to bring that up the sides because I want kind of a I don't know, almost like a spring flame sort of pattern coming up where it's a little bit framed on the sides here and moving down. Picking up, wiping away, picking up, back and forth, back and forth until you like it. You can use your blow dryer to blow off any excess at this point um, or just let it dry if you like it. Just using a little bit of a damp paper towel here just to, to dab off a little bit of this. Just put a tiny bit of water on my paper towel and I'm using a very light touch. I don't want to remove paint. I just got a little more pigment powder there than I wanted. But basically, I'm pretty happy with how this is. And then I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to go around the entire side here. I want it to be a little bit wet. Pigment will stick to the wet, wet areas and not so much to the dry, although it will leave a little bit of residue. The wet areas are going to pick up the powder. I'm going to put a little bit of pigment on my paper towel. And then rim my painting all the way around. So I have a real pretty gold rim on this which is pretty to do on some paintings. You don't always want it. You could even take a deeper color, like a deep, uh, sort of a, this is a real pretty plum. And I could mix a little bit of that with the gold. It gives you a real burnished, sort of almost antique and antique-ish look. I've just mixed a little of those together and a little depth on the side versus just gold. You can do that as dark as you like. You can bring that into your painting if you like or just on the edge. Again, I'm just dipping that, or you can, you know, um, pour a little out onto your palette. It's probably a better idea than dipping right into it, but I get a little impatient sometimes and just go ahead and do that. Let's see how I'm wiping this on here, and it's leaving a little bit of that residue, which wasn't fully intending on that in the beginning, but as we go forward, I kind of really like that. I think it's real pretty. It finishes it off and it makes it look a lot more rich than just the white on the top. Rich in color and tone. A little more pigment powder down here because I kind of really like that I grabbed that. So I'm going to add just a little depth down here in the bottom. Sometimes things come to you as you're working that you didn't really intend on, but end up being great happy accidents, as we call them. Moving to the sides. Just depends on what you're, you're doing and what you like and what you're okay to risk, because there's no back button on the old painting, on the old canvas, so sometimes it's a little frustrating. But sometimes it ends up working in your favor. Okay, right there. I'm not too thrilled with that. So I'm gonna have to 
Move a little bit. But this is just a back and forth process for you to get exactly where you're happy. Which I'm not too happy about those streaks. I'm going to have to work on that. I'm getting those gone. And that's going to require a little bit of probably wet on my paper towel. Yeah, and then just wiping them down. So sometimes that's how the art goes. If you don't have a fully defined plan when you start, sometimes even when you do, uh, you end up getting a little more of a unexpected result. And that's the beauty of original art. Okay, so we're pretty much finished with this. I'm going to let it dry, put a pretty glaze on it. I'm going to use a glossy glaze over this and then it will be ready to frame and display. This is how it looks in the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe and check out my other art tutorials and some of my large tutorial classes that I also offer as well. And all the links and everything is below. Please join my uh, Art Insiders so you can stay up on everything that's going on in my art world. Thanks for watching.